What I want to talk about next is something that I think about is and I pay rather close attention to is creating outcomes. And the way that I structure and order my life is that I will not do something or act on something even if I have an instinct to do so unless I feel as if it is going to produce an advantageous outcome or an outcome that is going to work in my favor. And basically what I mean by this is, for example, if let's say I've texted somebody, for instance, and they haven't gotten a hold of me or they haven't texted me back, and I do not need to get a hold of them at that very moment, and it does not matter, and it's not going to produce an advantageous outcome, then I will not reach back out, and I will not give them my attention. And this can be implemented in any sort of situation whatsoever. So let's say even in a conversation with someone. If, for instance, let's say, someone scrutinizes you, or... Let's say criticizes you in a way which you perceive to be as unjust or unjustified. See, what you must do is practice silence and view the situation pragmatically and be capable of envisaging the future to figure out whether or not you should proceed in your interaction with the individual or not. Meaning, you should figure out how much of yourself you should give to them. And how much of your opinion you should give to them. Or if you should retract your opinion completely. You see, you must have this ability to be able to tell whether or not what you say is going to produce an advantageous outcome. And in particular, if you feel angry because the person has scrutinized you in a way which you have perceived as unjust. Well, then you must wait. You must practice the art of non-reactivity. And a good person to think about, if you watch TV at all, is Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders. You see, he has this unique ability to remain calm and to display his... Um, what, I, what you might call... Not... To display his authority in any situation, regardless if it is heated or not. You see, even in difficult situations, let's say even in a situation where, the, where there is a gun to his head, he remains calm and he has this ability to rationally discern the situation. And he also understands when and when to not engage. You see... He doesn't pour gasoline on the fire if it if it doesn't need to be poured onto it. You see, he understands this, and this what make this is what makes him a good leader. Because in heated moments, he does not escalate the situation. He understands when to retract and when to submit. You see, because he is humble and not arrogant. You see, if you're arrogant, you're always going to want to push your will onto the other person push your power onto the other person so that you can dominate them but the best leaders are the people who are humble and who know and who know when they should submit and when they should be the dominant one they are always thinking and they're always calm and you see it is their very calmness which helps them in their ability to think in a way which is pragmatic and rational and this is why i believe that always focusing on the outcome of the situation is extremely important because whatever we do all of our actions are going to produce an outcome there is a cause and an effect this is a fundamental axiom of nature of reality it is embedded within the sciences of how the physics of the world works you see when we do something when, when we push a ball, it rolls. There's a cause and an effect. If we are going to speak Newtonianly. Or rather, in a way which is Newtonian. Although, of course, obviously, 
Einstein came along and general relativity was developed alongside with quantum mechanics. Nonetheless, Newtonian, the Newtonian view of reality is still conducive and, in a way, advantageous to our understanding of the universe as a whole. Although, of course, general relativity and quantum mechanics have different insights into the interworkings of atoms, the universe, the small, and gravity. Nonetheless, it is very important that we focus on outcomes. And understand that what we do is always going to produce an outcome. Because there is a cause and effect. And this is very important to understand. And this is why it is also extremely important to humble yourself. Because when you understand this, like I said, you will know when to subtract, when to submit, and when to interact and be domineering. When to assert your dominance and your power, and when to retract it. Because you must know when you have the upper hand and when you do not. Just like in poker, sometimes you know you have the best hand and sometimes you don't have the best hand. And sometimes you can bluff, but other times you know that you definitely have the win. But also sometimes you can fool yourself because you can have a hand which you believe to be very good, but somebody else could have a better hand. This is why it is important to always be scrupulous, attentive, and conscious. Because you can be fooled if you are not paying attention. And even if you are paying attention, you can still be fooled. Which is why it is extremely important to humble yourself and to not become angry with the fact that you can, in fact, be fooled. So you must focus on outcomes. Outcomes are extremely important. And this is where I'm going to end it.